Good day and welcome to my channel. This is Vicki. Teachers open the door, but you must enter by yourself. This is a very easy soap clay recipe. Just about any whole process soap recipe will work for soap clay. The water just needs to be reduced. coconut oil, palm oil, olive oil, castor oil. I prefer this type of plastic container for making soap. The fats and oils are added to the plastic container. The fats and oils are set off to the side until I'm ready to heat them up in the microwave. Next I will be adding the lye to the water. This needs to be done outside or in a very well ventilated area. As a soap maker, it is your responsibility to be aware of and to follow safe soap practices. The fats and oils have been heated in the microwave to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I will be using a mica colorant. My preference is to add two teaspoons of the colorant per pound of oils. I like the rich, vibrant color saturation that this amount of mica colorant gives to the soap. The stick blender is initially used just to stir the colorant into the oils. The stick blender is then turned on and used to completely blend the colorant and the oils. Both the lye solution and the melted oils are at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The lye solution is poured down the side of the plastic container. The stick blender is pulsed several times before turning it on to a continuous blend. I'm looking to create a medium to thick trace. I will be using a tall and skinny silicone mold. I have used cupcake molds, all sorts of molds for soap clay. Use whatever works for you. The top of the soap needs to be covered with a plastic wrap. The mold is placed on top of dowels. This will help disperse some of the heat from the bottom of the mold. Let the soap rest for three to five days. After three to five days, the soap clay will be okay to handle and to work with without gloves. The soap clay is uncured at this time. The soap was allowed to rest in the mold for three days. The soap is now ready to be conditioned. Conditioning just means to make it ready to use as soap clay.
I begin the conditioning process by cutting the loaf into eight pieces. The soap will then need to be shredded. Because I have limited hand strength, I prefer to use power tools whenever possible. Finely shredded soap. The shredded soap is formed into a ball. The ball is repeatedly pressed against the flat surface, and I'm using deli paper so it won't stick on my countertop, and it's also rolled and squished into my hand. This will create a uniformly smooth ball of soap clay. The deli paper is replaced with a new sheet when needed. I've worked with ceramic clays and polymer clays. Each requires a specific process to condition the clay to make it ready for use. The method that I have shown you for making and conditioning soap clay is not the only way to do it. I myself have done this many, many different ways, and I continue to experiment to find the easiest way to do this. In case you were wondering, it took about 40 minutes to condition the eight pieces of soap clay from start to finish. For most of my work, I prefer a firmer soap clay. This is a firmer soap clay. It holds detail much better than a softer soap clay. If you prefer a softer soap clay, just add a little more water to your recipe. I'm rolling out the soap clay between two sheets of deli paper. I want to show you how thin I can roll this if I choose to. I'm feeling the clay for lumps and bumps. If there are lumps and bumps, they've got to go. Look at the deli paper. There's hardly any residue of the soap on the deli paper. I measured the clay. It's two millimeters thick. A completed ball of soap clay. In order for soap clay to remain soap clay, it needs to be kept apart from the air. I usually wrap the soap clay with plastic wrap and I only make enough soap clay for the project that I will be working on.
Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and be creative.